All right, new school comic book reviews. Okay, I haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, let's just kind of jump into it. First comic book I've got is New Warriors number one. Uh, it's written by Christopher Yoss. Um, art is by Marcus Toe, and the coloring is by David Curiel. Uh, basically, it is the revival of the old New Warriors uh, Super Team comic from the 90s. I think they've done a couple other revivals uh, over the years. Um, in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, there was one a couple years ago. Um, I'm not that familiar um, <coughs> uh, with... Um, you know, with the team on a personal level, I, I really didn't read the other series, even though I've always kind of wanted to check it out. I just never got around to it. Uh, this one, this first issue was pretty good. It does a pretty good issue, a uh, pretty good job of introducing you to several of the characters, um, giving you a little bit of action. There's some nice characterization bits, and uh, it kind of establishes kind of a big threat that's going to come up. Uh, come up. You don't really see them function as a team yet, but like I said, you get to see the different characters doing their thing, and um, and, and it works for what it is. Uh, some of these characters I wasn't really familiar with, so I'm not 100% sure if, uh, uh, if a couple of them are supposed to be brand new characters, or they're just characters I don't know, but there is enough information in the pages that say, okay, this person's name is this, and this is what they do, you know, and they show you how these characters function and act and a little bit of what their personality is they haven't come together as a team yet obviously that's going to be coming down you know down the road in the next couple of issues but i liked it uh you get a group of kind of likable young superheroes who i guess are supposed to be in their late teens early 20s and it works i also like the art by uh, marcus toe uh, it's not very avant-garde or anything like that it's very basic mainstream uh, superhero art but it's good at that you know it's very crisp very clean I think he does a good job as far as uh, doing figure work and drawing characters in motion and things like that and I think his layouts are pretty clear you know you can always tell what's going on and, uh, and yeah so I'm gonna give it a few more issues it, it was good enough to keep me coming back like I said not particularly avant-garde or anything like that but it's good. I thought it was a solid superhero comic. Uh, next comic is All New X-Men, issue 23. Uh, writing is by Brian Michael Bendis. Art is by, uh, penciling is by Stuart Emmerman. And inking is by Wade Von Grawbagger. And the coloring is by Marty Garcia. Uh, yeah, I have a really strange relationship with this comic book because I keep meaning... I keep thinking I should drop this comic. I think Brian Michaels Bendis is writing is he's, he's kind of settled into the groove of just sort of padding things out and doing a lot of his ticks and things where there's a lot of talking, there's lots of dialogue, but it doesn't really advance the story. It doesn't show you anything about characterization or anything like that. There's a lot of padding and stretching things out. And, and what he's been doing in some of his more recent work is he'll come up with you know something that could be a good idea for a story or a good premise and doesn't follow through and develop into a really good story you know the stories kind of build up and then go nowhere or they just kind of end you know what i mean and um and that's kind of with this comic i mean when i first got it i was really excited about it but now it's kind of turned into this kind of you know when is this going to go somewhere uh so that's why i always feel i want to drop it however you know, Stuart Emmerman keeps coming back, you know, and uh, I just really like his art. I think it's really good eye candy. Um, I just love his style of his, uh, his like, again, his figure work. Uh, I think uh, Wade Von Grawbagger really compliments uh, Stuart's, uh, <coughs> Stuart's style, and it really works for me. It's just really nice to look at. It's, it's, it's worth buying for me almost just to look at the art so uh so that's where i'm at with this uh, the story here is the trial of jean gray so i guess the shiar is coming to pick up team jean and put her on trials for things that she did in the phoenix as a phoenix you know so long ago and the story also guest stars um guardians of the galaxy who of course you know have their new comic out a movie's going to be coming out pretty soon so obviously marvel wants to capitalize on that um, so let's see, you know, I, you know, I don't have a great, my expectations are low as far as how the story is going to end, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, like I said, 
saving grace of this comic has been Stuart Immerman's art. Uh, next comic book is Surprise of the Week for me, She-Hulk number one, uh, written by Charles Soule, art by Javier Polito, and coloring is by, I apologize, I'm probably going to say this name wrong, Munza Vincetti. Uh, it's basically a uh, more or less a one and one, one and done story that pretty much sets up the tone of the comic and pretty much the direction they're going to go into. She-Hulk, of course. Big green, super powered superhero who also works occasionally as a lawyer. And this comic mostly has lawyering. There's a little bit of action, but not too much. And the action that it is there is done in this kind of humorous way. Um, but it worked for me. I think the writing was sharp, it was funny, and I like the fact that it wasn't, uh, you know, it was, they didn't go for the cheap laughs that uh, some people sometimes go for with uh, with She-Hulk, and it works. I mean, a lot of people don't realize it's it's actually uh, there's a skill to doing one and done twenty page short stories. You know, a lot of people think eh, the one and dones are kind of filler, but really there's an art to it. There's a craft that not a lot of comic book writers can pull off these days. And like I said, I like uh, I like this issue. Um, Javier's uh, art is uh, kind of cartoony. It's maybe a little too loose for me, um, but I think it works. I think it works for the material, and I think it uh, again complements the writing and complements the story, and complements the uh, and helps set up the tone that uh, the comic's going for. So yeah, I was really impressed uh, by this comic, and uh, another thing I'm gonna keep checking out for the next several months. Okay, and uh, that's pretty much it. I did buy Painkiller Jane number four uh, from Icon, which is a Marvel imprint, um, but I'm missing issue three. If I get issue three within the next few days, maybe I'll do a video and, and, um, and review the whole, uh, whole miniseries. I got a few other comics, but I haven't read them yet. I think I got uh, Minimum Wage 2 from Image, Harley Quinn 3 from uh, DC, Winter Soldier 1 from Marvel, and Astro City 9 from uh, Vertical, which is a DC imprint. Uh, again, if I read any of these in the next few days, uh, I'll probably do another video. Uh, so I guess that's it right now. Uh, I gotta thank you very much for listening, and everybody has a good day.